G'day graphic designers. Um, this demonstration is about styling buttons with CSS. Uh, I'm working in CodePen. You can start your own pen to, uh, to follow along with me. First thing I want to do is I'm going to add into the CSS um, font to work with. And I think we'll choose Roboto, and I'm going to use the at import CSS, and I can pop that into my um, into my CSS file, like so. So that's going to call um, it's going to call Roboto uh, or the style sheet for Roboto. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add some style rules for the body element of our page, just to kind of set a few things up. Um, and the first thing I want to set up is the actual font family um, that I'm using. And it's going to be Boto and or Sans Serif. If, um, if Roboto for some reason isn't available. That's the first thing that I want to do. Um, let's add a bit of HTML now, see how that kind of looks. Um, and we're making a button, so first thing I'm going to do is just add an anchor tag, because we usually make our navigation out of anchor elements. Um, and I'm going to give my anchor tag a class, I'll call it my link. Now that's just a name that I've made up, uh, could be anything. We do need to add an attribute for a, an anchor tag, and that's the href attribute, and inside there I'm going to put a, um, a hash, uh, and that denotes a, uh, a dead link. Um, but if you were making this um, in the real world, you'd actually put a URL in there, a URL string. So this is going to be a maybe a submit button, something like that, and then I'll end that uh, anchor tag off like that. So we can see here we've got a um, an anchor tag rendered over in the right hand side, and by default. Um, a browser will style a, an anchor tag, as you know, with set in, um, set in blue with an underline. Now I've just noticed a problem that you might have already picked up on. Um, our Roboto font isn't working and I can see the typo that I've made there. Um, and instantly fixed up that typo save my pen um, and you can see that that Roboto font is being rendered. Okay so that's a link. If there was a URL in my href that would work. Um, what I need to do now is make that kind of look good and I'm going to do a, add a bit, of, a bit of style to it. Um, kind of just on the fly um, and we'll just see where it goes. I'm going to add a little bit more markup to my page um, just so that I can position my button uh, in the center of the page. So I'm going to create a div for it to live in. I'm going to give it a class, um, I don't know, my box. Maybe. Oops. Um, of course, now. Classes have to be in quote marks, and I'm going to wrap wrap that div around my, my my link, and I'll just fix up that typo there. Not that it would, would have mattered, um, but it'll get me into some trouble later on. And I might just keep things consistent by adding in a uh, a dash like I have for my box. So I've got my box and my link. 
So that's it. That's the markup that I want to use. Now let's style both of those elements. The div with the class of my box, and the anchor tag with the class of my link. We've already um, given our body uh, the font family of Roboto. Uh, and I think I'm going to give the body a color. Maybe something like um, just a gray. Awesome. So that's my body, and I'm going to style my div class um, of my box in white uh, so that, um, I don't know, maybe it looks like a submit kind of panel. Um, just before body, Let's get in the habit of, uh, of resetting. If I add, if I target the um, target elements using this asterisk, that means that I'll target absolutely every element on the page. And to reset the box model margins to zero and also the padding zero um, often helps because it gets rid of any of that kind of default padding that we often see around elements. Another property to include in a reset that's pretty good is box sizing. Um, I won't be able to uh, illustrate exactly what that does at the moment. Um, oops, border box is what I want to put in there. Go and do a little bit of Google on box, the box sizing um, property. Very helpful in a reset. All right, so we've reset anything. We've got no margins, no padding. Um, let's move on to style our div. Um, so I'm going to add a rule for that class of my box. Try not to tap too loudly on the uh, keyboard there. I know that upsets some people. Um, I'm going to give the box a max width. Oops. 600 pics, and that's a pretty arbitrary number. And a background color so we can see what's going on here. background color of white, so we've got a white box on it, that dark gray background. So there it is, you can see that it's 600 pixels um, and it'll shrink when we get um, below 600 pixels. Um, now let's add in some margin. Uh, we can use the margin hack to um, to center our box. So we'll add a margin top and bottom of 40 pixels and on the right it's going to be auto so we'll uh, the right and the left it will be auto so we'll equal out whatever space is left and center that box in the center of the body element, which is kind of good. Let's give it a height so we can just see what it looks like. We'll just give it some more form, I suppose. Um, and also I'm gonna add some border radius around about 25 pixels. Oops. Because um, what I'm trying to make here is a kind of a, um, I don't know, maybe a box for a contact form, some sort of form. And we're going to get on in a sec to creating the button, or styling the button. Let's give the, uh, the box a bit of 
padding. I usually put the padding and the margin together in my style rules. But you can see now that that's brought the um, brought the uh, the anchor tag into the center of the um, of the box a little bit. And if we go text align center. And bring our anchor tag into the middle of that box as well. So that's cool. And I've got a like an environment for our anchor tag to live or our button to live. Let's style the button. Um, so let's have a look at it. It's an anchor tag. All right. So I'm going to select all anchor tags with class name of my link. So if I append my class name onto the anchor tag. It's only going to style anchor tags with that class name. All other um, anchor tags will remain as is. Um, let's give it a background color. I think um, a button deserves a background color. And I'm just going to give it a red background color. See, we've got a red background color. Let's style the uh, the text in white. So we can just write white or else I could use the hexadecimal code of six F's um, to get rid of the stroke underneath. We're going to use a property called text decoration. Um, and there's a bunch of different kind of values you can add to text decoration, but one of them is none. So that's going to Hopefully, take away that um, that underline. Let's uh, pad out the button a little bit. Um, start with maybe 20 pixels. So that's a nice kind of big button. Maybe we'll do 20 pixels top and bottom, and a little bit more on the left and right. All right, and to keep it in style with its background. We'll add a bit of border radius. If I add quite a lot of border radius, I can make that um, you know, typical uh, pill shape button that we, um, that we see quite a bit. Uh, let's emphasize the button a little bit by create, bringing up the font size. I'm going to use M's. Just bring it up 0.4 and save my pen into my dashboard. Um, all right, so that's looking like a great button for a contact form or some sort of interactive element on a page. I want to give the user some feed, some extra feedback um, to let them know that it is a button. You can see my cursor changed the little pointy cartoon hand, and that's a default behavior of the browser to show the user that it is an interactive element. But let's emphasize that by styling um, what we call the the hover state of an anchor tag. So I'm going to style again um, the anchor tags with the class of, um, of my link. So again, targeting this guy here. But I'm going to append to that the um, state of hover. Okay, so that means when the cursor hovers over the top of this class, um, give it this CSS style rule. I'm simply going to change the background color. Maybe we'll make it uh, kind of a gray color. All right, so anchor tags with a class of my link and the hover state of that class. And when I roll over it now, it kind of has that classic button swap out of the color. So that's good. That's called the hover state. Um, another state that we can, um, I'll just copy that, that we can style for is the active state. So that's the state um, 
that's the state of actually clicking the button. So what can we do for that? Let's maybe make it um, change the background color to black. When we actually click on the button, oops. So you can see I roll over it, turns gray, and then when I click on it, it turns black. So that's the active state. And there we have it. We've made a nice uh, kind of classic pill-shaped submission button um, for some kind of inter interactive form on the page.